Brian Joseph now ready to get this one started, and we are underway from Minneapolis. And this will go as a touchback, and they will begin things at the 25. First go on offense for the Giants under the guidance of Daniel Jones, the former Duke Blue Devil. We knew about the great mind coming out of Duke, and we saw the athletic ability and the potential. Watching it all come together and get better with each passing year, that's been fun. He can throw it deep, throw it short, and of course take off out of the pocket and beat you with his legs as well. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Gotta like that start. 14 yards to get him going. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They'll go to Barkley again. And able to get this one all the way up to about the 46-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. A good run. Got seven on first. Here's second and three. Throwing Jones. That'll be taken in there by Kenny Galladay. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 44-yard line. 11 yards there as they connect on the quick slam. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. A first down carry for Barkley. And he's got it to about the 40. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. From the 40 now on second down, Jones. And this will be caught. It's Isaiah Hodgins. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. Now Jones. And he's going to get this down near the 25. Solid opening drive so far, Charles. They've moved this football into field goal range, but you know that they want to cap this off with six and not three. Absolutely. As one of the better coaches in the league always tells me, on offense, I want to throw body blows all game long and finish it with uppercuts. Well, here are the body blows right now. He's hoping in one uppercut will take care of the end of this drive. And he'll be marked down right at the 15-yard line. Really a solid start here on the opening drive, Charles. He's now 4-4, four four, and they're already in plus territory. Brandon, he's been so precise to start this game, like we're watching an operation taking place right now. Master Surgeon at work. And he is going to lose yardage here. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. score after one on EA Sports. Second down, here's Barkley again. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now hold on here, we do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. So erase the red zone score. They'll have to dial that one up again. And you know how difficult it is to strike in the red zone because things are a little bit more condensed. You gotta go back to their play chart and see if they can dial up another one. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. So the celebration in the end zone, but meanwhile, we do have an injured player. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. Jones now to throw on third down. Escaping the pressure right. And he will take it on in for a giant touchdown. Daniel Jones, a 12-yard touchdown run. And the Giants post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. 
Gano the extra point, and it's now a 7 0 game. So that one a pretty time consuming 10 play drive, and it was capped off by a 12 yard touchdown run. Kene Nwagu now out of his end zone. And they'll get him down right at the 25 yard line, so the same result, and he opted for the touchback. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 25 yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Open here, Adam Thielen. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Cousins now. Open man, once again, it's Thielen. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. Another connection between the two. This one good for 12 and a first down. The throw is Cousins. That's complete to Justin Jefferson. And he's going to be taken down just shy of the 35. Well, so far, a little to no resistance by the defense on this drive alone. Three passes, three completions, three first downs. They're taking it to him, and it's paying off. To the air again, it's Cousins. Another one on this play for Justin Jefferson. And able to get this to the 24-yard line. They began the play at the 12. It's also a pickup of 12 for the first down. Cousins. A quick throw knocked away. It's incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game. It has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try to pick up another first down. Throwing again on second and 10. Cousins to the right side and complete to Jefferson. And he's out of bounds, almost gets to the 10. Cousins in step with Jefferson that time. First down, Vikings. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going. And right now, it's paying off with big chunks of yardage, as shown by that last play. Cousins again. That is caught at the seven-yard line. And the Vikings are going to have a first and goal. They nearly had the touchdown, but he's going to be marked out of bounds just shy of the pylon. Now a timeout called for by the offense as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. They'll run with Cook, and he'll get in. Touchdown, Minnesota. Delvin Cook as the first half is winding down, and the Vikings have a chance to tie the game here in the final seconds of the half. Joseph connects on the extra point, and that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 here as the kick's away. Fielded right around the 8. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Make a play, baby. Make a play. 
The Giants offense at the line, ready to begin their next drive. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively, they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Now Jones, throwing on first down. Gets it quickly to Galladay. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. And that will wind up just short. He had it on line. It ran out of gas at the end. Apologies to coach. Cut him short. We'll talk to him post game. We got business to get down to. Third quarter action. Ready to go. Set and ready to go for the second half. One touchdown apiece. 7-7 our score. And we will not have a run back here as the second half starts with a touchback. Well, the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. It's a tie football game here. What do you think, Charles, the message was at halftime? Well, I think that they probably just looked at things and said, we're fortunate that this is a tie game. No need to panic. No need to change a whole lot. We didn't play anything close to our best in the first half, so we don't have to go out and win one for the Gipper. Let's just go out and play our best football and win one for us. Second and six, just inside the 30. Yellow, yellow, yellow. Cousins. Completes it to the fullback, Ham. And only able to get two here, stopped at the 30. I wouldn't be surprised to see the next step in utilizing this position is to actually utilize more of a scat back in this spot because we saw the catch there, right? He made it, but he's a bigger, stronger guy, maybe not quite as elusive as maybe someone else you would put yeah, there. Yeah, didn't get the big yardage there you might out of a smaller back. Here's Cousins. Pushes him over. That's caught by the tight end, Irv Smith Jr. And he will have a Vikings first down as he's able to get eight yards there on third and five. Cousins gives way to Cook. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Again, it's Cook. And some space here. Yeah, he will go out right near the 35-yard line. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. Defense really kept him in check running the football in the first half. Maybe that'll be a spark for him here in half two. So two words come to mind for me. Resilient, because he has to keep bouncing back after some limiting runs. And have that relentless. Keep going, knowing that you may pop one as he just did there. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Second and 12, Cousins. Smith brings it in, going across the middle. And he's brought down in the red zone at the 18 after a gain of 18. First and 10. When this offense can get their tight ends involved. They can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Now Cook running right. 
And he'll be out of bounds, taking it just shy of the 10 at the 11 or the 12. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Now, what's the thinking here? Because a touchdown would be nice, but you've ensured yourself a chance at three in the lead, so how worried are you about the six? You're not very worried about it if you're confident in your kicker. And if you got a kicker who can put it through the post, you feel really good about trying to bleed that clock down. In an ideal scenario, your kicker puts it through the post as the clock hits zeros. I tell you, they didn't give it to him much for the first three quarters, but when they have, he's been efficient. Maybe they ride him more here down the stretch. Yeah, hey, not sure it was actually in the game plan for him to have as few carries as he has, but it might play out really well for them now. As you noted, they want to ride him down the stretch. He should have fresh legs. All tied up, less than two minutes to go. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. They've got it second and goal as they look to grab a late lead. Good yardage on first down. Now can they punch it in on second and goal? They'll run for it with Cook. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. Dalvin Cook with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Vikings have broken our tie and have taken a fourth quarter lead. Everybody in the stadium knew what they were going to do right there, CD. Three tight ends on the field, all that extra bulk, and they run it in. And you saw where that one went, right? You run it over your best blocker. I can just see the head coach right now. I want to run this one over the big boy. And they got it done. Important extra point up and through. And that makes the score 14-7. So that one along 11 play drive. And it's capped off by the touchdown run coming from Dalvin Cook. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. So now Jones and the Giants down 14 to 7. Just under two minutes to go. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Here's Jones. They'll set up the screen to Barkley. And he is going to lose yardage here. Clock rolling as the Giants will hurry to the line. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Now we're in the situation where the quarterback's got to take full charge of his huddle. Got to totally command and make sure all eyes are on him. All focus is locked in. Going to call multiple plays and go over different situations and scenarios to make sure everyone is on the same page. With that incompletion, reality is staring them right in the face. This entire game is down to the next snap. Desperation time now. Here's Jones. And this a leaping effort, but it's knocked away and incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Vikings, they have the football now in excellent field position. First down, here's the run with Cook. The Giants going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. A tenth carry in the game for Cook. And this time he's not going anywhere. They'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. Now a second timeout called for by the defense as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Here's Cousins. And this is going to be incomplete. To give you an idea of how accurate he's been throwing the football, we're in the second half. That's just his second incompletion. Well, if he's that locked in, that means everyone's locked in because to me it's like throwing a no-hitter in baseball. The pitcher may get the credit. A lot of people making plays behind him in the field.
So the starting field position was terrific following the surprising turnover on downs, but the end result, only three points. Simply stated, I think you have to look at that as a missed opportunity. Joseph now to kick this one away. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. The New York set to take the field. They might be thinking this is close to a lost cause here. Got to play it out. What do they need to do? Well, they have a thought process in mind already, but they can't get ahead of themselves. They know that they need to score quickly. Yep, two-score game. Onside kick and get the ball back and then score again, but they can't worry about the last two points. <laughs> the only thing that matters is scoring quickly, then they'll take it from there. To throw is Jones. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked up by the linebacker, and Eric Kendricks. And the Vikings are going to take possession of the football. All smiles and high fives on that defensive sideline. That interception will cap off what was truly a tremendous performance. Yeah, if you can hold a team to seven points in the NFL, that's the kind of day that you feel really good about. And I do know a few guys are going to think to themselves, held them to seven. If we'd made one more play, could have had our shutout. The Giants going to burn their third and final timeout as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in the fourth. So they come up on second down, and they can get another run like we just saw. Would likely put an end to this thing. Here's Cook again. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. 78 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. Second down, Cook, and he takes it in for the score on the game's final play, so it doesn't affect the outcome, but a little whipped cream on top to their ending. As our friends in Bayou Country would say, that's a little lead, yeah, a little extra. So the final seconds have ticked away in this Minnesota victory. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, Whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and nope.